And I didn't know, I was practicing for almost 20 years. I didn't know how, how fragmented our healthcare system was until, until I became a patient. If you got one, spark up. You listen to the Higher Learning Podcast with 420 NJ Events. Let's go! Happy 420, everybody. Welcome to the Higher Learning with 420 NJ Events Podcast. I'm your host, Brendan Robinson. Here with my brother, my co-host, my dog, Stan O'Coro. Stan, what's up, baby? What's going on, brother? Chilling as always, bro. Chilling as always, man. We, uh, we got a special guest on the show as always tonight. I uh, I want to call this man good energy because since day one, he's been nothing but good energy. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? But he, but you know, bro, he's much more than that. Thank he's, you. you know what I'm saying? He's an MD specialized in the family medicine. He knows his cannabis plant like the back of his hand. Mm-hmm. And listen, don't get it messed up. My man can go, you know, joint for joint with you too, all right? From Jersey, repping ATL. I'm talking about our guy, our man, Dr. Rashawn Hodge. What's up, baby? What's up, baby? Good evening, man. man. So glad to be on the show. You know, I'm getting this uh, bowl nice and hot. <laughs> what you got there? 400, 500 degrees for those that don't do, uh, that, that are new to the dab 710 world, you know? <laughs> 420 NJ is great, but I'm on the 710 edition tonight. Oh, okay. All right. Well, look, look, listen, I'm, I wore the black shades just for you, baby. All right. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm on, the, uh, I'm on CBD Diamonds right now. CBD Diamonds, okay, okay. I'm a big concentrate fan. Um, I like to inhale, that's my favorite. The little nah. example, but uh, concentrates. I'm big on potency. Well, Doc, listen, I'm, I'm gonna jump right into it, bro. I'm gonna jump right into it, you get your dab going there. You know, um, one of the things like to always kind of kick the show off with is obviously lighting one up mm-hmm. and um, kind of asking our guests how they got into the cannabis industry. With you being an MD, I would love to kind of know how you got into medicine and then kind of transition obviously to cannabis. All right, so, uh, Man, medicine was, uh, that was something like, look, man, I wanted to play football, Jersey guy. So I've been playing peewee football since five. Um, that was an aspiration of mine, but my mom was like, look, you're gonna be a, a doctor. Mm-hmm. And uh, I kind of just trusted that, bro. You know, my parents were really big on education. Uh, they met at Tuskegee University. <coughs> and uh, both being from Alabama, and after graduating from Tuskegee, they went to New York, uh, went to New Jersey, and that's where I was born at, in Jersey. So, you know, they were really big on education. Um, uh, I'm one of six kids. Uh, my, I, I followed my eldest sister, she's a surgeon. Um, she went to Spelman. Um, I went to Morehouse, following her footsteps. She went to med school in New Jersey, Robert Wood Johnson. I uh, went to Robert Wood as well in, uh, in Biscataway and uh, Family Medicine Train. So that's, that's how I became a doc. Okay, okay. So I, I, I get the doctor portion. How'd you cross over to the cannabis? That's the best part, bro. I've been practicing medicine for like, <coughs> excuse me, that dad was great. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm ready to inhale. <laughs> Uh, well, I got into like, like, look, I'm family medicine, and you know, a family medicine doctor is a jack of all trades, a master of none. So I had 54 deliveries, man. I thought maybe I'd be that, like, Cleef, you know, like the Huxtable dude delivering babies and shit. And that wasn't all. Like, it, you know, the first one was cool, and then like after like the fourth or five, I'm like, man, you on call all the damn time. I didn't care. Uh, you know, cough and cold was boring as fuck to me. Um, dealing with hypertension and diabetes was very was very frustrating. And so I kind of got into pain management and hospice. So I love the uh, hospice, end of life care, palliative care. Um, I love the pain management in that. I loved using the morphine, the Ativan, the phenobarbital to handle end of life symptoms. Um, I started doing some clinical research as well. And then I broke my neck. <laughs> you know, I was doing all this shit finding out my groove in medicine and what I wanted to do. Uh, uh, pain management is what I loved. And then I had a, a basketball injury and I broke my C4, C5 in 2012. Uh, became all the morphine and benzos and, and, and trazodones to help my patients for chronic pain in the life. I had to end up, end up taking every day. Uh, of course, I knew there was a ton of side effects. I had those side effects uh, um, and I didn't know, I was practicing for almost 20 years. I didn't know how how fragmented our healthcare system was until until I became a patient. 
And, you know, when I mean fragmented, like, you know, I had pain, but I also had depression. Like, I, I have, yeah, you give me opioids, but I have this nerve pain that doesn't, the opioids don't really touch my nerve pain. So you give me gabapentin, Neurontin, I understand those drugs, but those are for my diabetic patients. Why are you giving me these drugs, you know? But then I, I can't sleep. You're giving me benzos and, and Ambien and, and, and us for people for jet lag, you only get that for three days. You want me to take a whole bottle of this every day? So of course, of course there's, you know, poly substance abuse happens, you know, <laughs> abuse. So I was super desperate, man. It was like 24 states that had a medical cannabis program. And I'm in Georgia, you know, uh, where a lot of people like me have to leave our state, become medical marijuana refugees, you know, go to a friendly state like Colorado or Utah, you know, anywhere that has a good medicinal, robust medicinal cannabis program or recreational program. So um, uh, I started this, I, I tried it, bro. I tried it and I tried it all. <laughs> I tried it all, man. I went to the streets, man, and and picked up gummies, vapes, uh, shit, man. Uh, dry flour, tinctures, cause it's the wild, wild west down here. There's no regulation. And, but it, I saw the therapeutic effects of cannabis and that started it all, bro. That started it all. You, all right, man, and, you touched a lot there, doc. Obviously giving that breakdown around the different pills, the different opioids and things of that nature. You yeah. know, one, one of the things we're always concentrated on is just really destigmatizing cannabis. We'll open people up to that. So I'm just curious, do, thinking kind of in the future, do you see cannabis being a replacement to pills and opioids or more of a supplement? Yeah, I, I see the future is going to be uh, semi-synthetic. You know, uh, cannabis right now to treat the masses is very, very expensive, as you guys know, and probably have il illustrated that on the shows. Uh, you know, the docs make the recommendation, but most of those physicians have never been in the dispensary, never been in the head shop. So, and most patients that have a chronic illness that do, that are applicable for medicinal cannabis, they're on disability, you know, they can't work. So they don't understand a three, five, you know, they don't understand an eighth. They don't understand like, you know, $80, they don't understand like, and you get this wrong recommendation, you know, and that patient can't even use it and they use all their post-tax dollars. It just kills the movement. Mm -hmm. So the future um, would be one, to grow this thing cheaper and faster, you know? And make sure uh, you protect the genetics. The other part is taking the bad parts out of cannabis, which you and I don't like, mm -hmm. you know, the psychoactive parts of it, uh, you know, um, make sure it's super clean, no heavy metals, no pesticides. Mm -hmm. So the future will be like CBD mm -hmm. and maybe a partial opioid. And that would be used for acute pain. Now chronic pain, you know, you can use high THC products, of course, opioid, but that was gonna, that's gonna help the opioid epidemic for sure. No, for sure, man. Yeah, for sure. yeah. but the studies are great, bro. Uh, I mean, Big Pharma's been working on, 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 on formulation since the 60s and 70s. You know, once we uh, discovered THC in 1964, uh, most pharmaceutical companies got to work, bro. Mm -hmm. They got to work. <laughs> you know, you, you know, we, they got to work on the other cannabinoids and what they can use to uh, mass produce and get on insurance panels. So, you know, you guys know we have four FDA approved cannabis drugs now. So the government, they, they, it's not, it's sim, it's synthetic, but that's the future. No, absolutely, absolutely, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, you brought up a really good point, Doc. I mean, I think that the, the fact that, like, we look at education, obviously being educated around the plant's important, but understanding this plant is expensive. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, and the taxes too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, when you think about the legal market, you, it's expensive and it's causing a lot of people to go to different variants. One variant down here, I mean, up here in Jersey, at least, is going really big is Delta 8. So, I mean, there's been a lot of talk around Delta 8. What's yeah. legal, what's not legal. You know, I know that you're a doc that loves that plant science. You love the, <laughs> you love the, you love the chemistry, you know what I'm saying? I do. I'm a big ass nerd when it comes to this, but I'm obsessed. So Delta now, 8, have you tried Delta 8, bro? I have tried it. I have tried it. Thoughts? I'll be real with you. I tried it. I enjoyed it the first time. 
Uh-huh. And then I did some research on it and just wasn't sure. So I kind of fell back from it. Okay, I told you uh, THC was discovered by Dr. Machillum, right? Shout okay. out to that guy. Still living, still working for us. Still advancing. And he's, he's in his 80s. Oh, wow. Wow. He's a bad dude. Uh, so that was 1964. Um, and that's Delta 9 THC, right? That's mm-hmm. the psychoactive part. L- your listeners are smart. They know that. So in 1969, they discovered Delta 8. And then they synthesized that bitch in 1970. And the only difference for my chemist guys, for people that want to understand botany, and for people that need to understand pharma, pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, what does your body do when it in, when it receives a drug. It's it really important that you understand the chemical structure. Mm-hmm. So the only difference between Delta-8 and Delta-9 is that the double bond on Delta-9 is, just, is between the carbon number nine and the carbon, the 10th carbon. For, de, for Delta-8, there's a double bond between the, the eight and the nine carbon. So okay. they're twins, they're isomers, but that double bond makes it different. And that's super important because you you said yourself, Brendan, that you felt chill, you felt relaxed. For sure. So yeah, you felt the cycle activity. So you know that the CB1 was activated, right? Mm-hmm. The CB1 receptor. You know, sure. y'all know CB1 and CB2 receptors are your main receptors for the ECS, right? For sure, so sure. You inhaled that at Delta 8, and then it gets into your lungs, pulmonary vein, goes into your bloodstream, your heart pumps it, crosses your blood brain barrier, and boom, it hits your CB1 receptors. And within one minute, you feel relaxed, right? Mm-hmm. Now, that's Delta 9. Delta 8 is going to do the same thing. Remember, I told you they twins, but they can't possibly fit on the CB1 receptor at the same spot if the double bond is off, right? Mm-hmm. I said there's a difference, right? So Delta-8 will stick to the CB1 receptor 80% as effective as Delta-9. Mm. So the whole world was intrigued when they discovered Delta-8 because what do people hate about cannabis? The psychoactive. For sure. Boom, Stanley, the psychoactivity. When there's less adverse events, if there's no adverse events, that's the way doctors make sure patients are 100% compliant, right? The pharmaceutical world is like, shit, if Delta-8 is just like Delta-9, but you, you don't get as high, we, we can do, we can make some money in it. And that's one. Two, um, Delta-9 breaks down just at, you know, Cannabis, you leave cannabis out. This is CBD. This is CBD. Um, light, the air, it's gonna break it down, oxidation, and it goes down, it breaks down THC into CBN. So the pharmaceutical world, we, we know we wanna be profitable. We don't wanna make drugs that's gonna, that's gonna start breaking down and that's a new different drug or it's, it's not effective anymore. Mm-hmm. Delta-8 resists breakdown, doesn't break down the CBN. So again, it's, it caused less adverse events and it doesn't break down like Delta 8 into CBN. Everybody wanted to start clinical trials. Mm-hmm. So du- studies were hard to duplicate and that's the reason why Delta 8 is not as popular as Delta 9. Now with the Farm Bill in 2018, once CBD, once hemp was legalized, you can, CBD can turn into THC and then you can use CBD and you can chemically make Delta-8. You dig what I'm saying? So they said Delta-9 is psychoactive in Schedule 1, but Delta-8, which is an isomer, got off the list because these legislators don't know science. You feel me? Sure. They don't understand science. And that's why you now have five states that have regulated, not banned, but they're regulating Delta-8. You know, Michigan's the latest state to regulate Delta-8 because it's going to get you high like Delta-9, but it's in every gas station. Mm-hmm. You, you, you know the importance of regulation 
You know, yeah. this, this is not, it's too much bread, bro. Mm-hmm. This shit ain't ethical. I you know, agree with you. anyone that's selling Delta, hey, make your money while you can, but that shit is going to end very, very fast. Now, I mean, I, obviously we talk about the regulations. It's so important that we know what we're smoking. We know what we're putting in our bodies. We know what's going in our system. Yeah. You know? It's super important, bro, because uh, mo- a lot of us in the future, they're going to be on cannabis for a long time. You know, look, you know, you got like 40 something states that have medicinal programs. So, you know, you got and sickle cell is, a, is in a condition in most states. Now, that sickle cell kid has his first crisis at three months of age. That cannabis got to be ethical. You see? Mm-hmm, 100%. Got to be ethical, 100%. Because that kid's going to be on the for the, from three months of age, and there's so many delivery methods, we can always use cannabis, right? Mm-hmm. All right we can use the gums, we can use the oil. Yeah, they're going to be on it for the rest of their lives. So it has to be clean. It has to be the same product. The chemo type has to be the same. Um, the CBD THC ratio has to be the same. So it has to be honest, has to be ethical, it has to be regulated. Now you're spot on, man. And, it, and it's interesting, like one of the things that kind of drew my brother and I to you initially, man, yeah. you speak a lot about mental health in, uh, in different podcasts, you know, obviously your platforms. And I love the fact that you as a, you know, a CBD user, you're yeah. really focused on the mental health aspect because I think, especially in the black and brown community, that's yeah. where that this plant can really help us. So if you don't mind, could you talk a little bit about that? Well, um, like, you know, we've been using, you know, just being, you know, just being black and brown, uh, you understand that, you know, yeah, you gotta work three times harder. And sometimes hard work just ain't good enough. And sometimes you're in a situation where there is no pockets of hope. And some and, and some of us live in, in food deserts where you will develop diabetes and hypertension and and there's no generational wealth. And you know, they, they glorify us hurting one another and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of trauma, you know? Mm-hmm. And um our community has been has embraced cannabis as a way to as an anxiolytic as something to you know anxiolytic i mean it reduces anxiety and, and cannabis can cause an increase in psychosis for, for but for most of us it calms you down you dig mm-hmm. so um what the american medical association finally has done they recognize racial trauma is the same thing is the same thing as post-traumatic stress disorder. So uh, I was very happy to finally get here about that diagnosis because um, they they package PTSD in, for veterans because mm-hmm. they usually make up just three percent of the population, and it's so easy to give them disability. And shout out to all my active and active duty and retired and the marks. Absolutely, and absolutely. Yeah, y'all are the, y'all the shit. So uh, they packaged it and sold it, and we bought it. Cause you're like, shit, man, that's gotta be horrible. Can you imagine, man, you, you in basic training for eight months with your buddy and boom, you, you a car, a roadside bomb and, and he's dead and you're like 20 and, you, and you're like, damn. You, but that's the same thing happened in our communities, bro. Yeah. At six years old, at eight years old, at 13, it's you in the park hooping and boom, your buddy, boom, like brains, boom. And it could be from, a public servant called a police officer. Mm-hmm. Now you know how much that shit's gonna rat frazzle you and traumatize you. So, but we make up 13% of the population. Now you're giving 16, 20, 20%, we all get disability. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they got a problem. But yeah, we well, deserve disability because it's a mental condition. You can't help it. You know, when you see a policeman, you know. If you're a black man over the age of 20, maybe 25, 26, you, your heart rate's gonna increase. That's not normal to start panicking when it's mm-hmm. a public servant. You dig what I'm saying? And it never, it didn't, didn't have to happen to you just by scrolling all the time and seeing pictures and images of young people not making it past 21 and glorified. That traumatizes you too. So sure. you don't have to directly experience it, be a victim of it. As long as it affects affects you for more than six months, mm-hmm. it goes from acute stress disorder by definition to post traumatic 
post-traumatic stress disorder. And I think brothers and sisters need to understand that racial trauma is PTSD. See your doctor and it's good to cover yourself. Get it, just get that diagnosis and cover yourself because it might come to a point where you can't work. And we've been making excuses forever or got to pound alcohol after work just to deal or to decompress or do some stupid pills to decompress or you, just to deal. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Um, You're spot on, brother. And you talk about that, the racial aspect of just getting in your car and how you feel when a police officer gets behind you, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a insane. shame. It's insane. It's a shame when you got, and it's not just those public servants, it's, you know, the courtroom, it's, it's the legislators, you know? Once you're on the wrong end of that, the whole thing's intimidating. Now I know after practicing 20 years, man, if the mind ain't good, bro, well, I don't it's, care. I don't care. So it's gotta be mind, body, and soul. When I broke my neck, man, it wasn't me in the chair for four months. It was it was the mentals. It was the mentals I couldn't handle, dog. It's crazy, dog, because I've, I've heard you say that mind, body, and soul on so many occasions, bro. Yeah. And, and you mentioned like how it brings couples together. It can make you a better father, a better mother. Just, yeah. just, just thinking more clearly. And the, you know, the, the world is becoming more open to cannabis. But my question to you, do you, do you see Big Pharma letting this happen? Do you see federal legalization being a real Yeah, for sure. Like I said, they already got four in. Okay. Aaron all, they have Sysomet, they have, uh, uh, they have uh, Sativex, they have uh, Epidolex. So Big Pharma's in. Okay. They've been in. Since the 80s, they've been in. For sure, man. And listen, that, that research, again, is going to open up more education. What's going on, 420 NJ Events family? It's your boy, Brendan Robinson. I'm here with my dog, my co-founder, Stan Okoro. Nope. It's the time of the month, y'all. All right, that's right. We're talking about them hamper boxes, baby. Now listen, this ain't no regular hamper box. Let me tell you about it. We got the bubble bath boxes with the rubber ducky inside, okay? Shucky, shucky, quack, quack, all right? But listen. These are only going to be around for a few more days, all right? So make sure you visit hemper.co. That's hemper.co. And use the promo code 420NJ. That's 420NJ. You get 10% off. Where else are you going to get these boxes curated monthly with 10 distinct smoking accessories for $40? Exactly, all right? So hit them up. Use our code. Once again, it's your boy, Brendan Robinson. Here with my dog, my main man, Stan Okoro. Proudly sponsored by Hemper. Let's go. One of the things we get hit with all the time, Doc, people constantly hitting us up with the how-to behind getting their medical marijuana card. Now, I know it varies state by state, but what's some general advice you give folks in terms of just dealing with their physician, getting to that point where they can get their medical marijuana card and, and have these benefits? All right, well, most states are uniform, so, um, and I used to be a, um, you know, I used to be a physician that qualified patients here in Georgia. Uh, for the medicinal cannabis card. So I can, I can really speak on this topic. So the states, even though the federal government had made cannabis illegal, right? Mm -hmm. States have a right to interpret federal law. So most states now have interpreted federal law during, with, with legislation have made medicinal cannabis laws. So when it's strictly medicinal, not a recreational state, you have to see a physician. So the hard part is in whatever state you guys live in is either they advertise the state, the doctors that make cannabis recommendation or it's word of mouth. I'm in a state where it's, it's illegal to ever put doctors on billboards and, and, and you can Google cannabis doctors and a whole bunch of doctors in Georgia will pop up. Uh, it's, it's word of mouth, Some, it's different on legislation. So once you figure out that process, if you're a patient, or a caregiver, because the, pa the programs are for patients and for caregivers. Uh, so let's speak on Georgia. Um, figure out what diseases is are applicable for cannabis in your state. In Georgia, we have uh, 17 diseases, uh, including autism. Um, autism is the number one condition that most parents pick up cannabis and dispensaries is for their autistic or autistic autism spectrum, spectrum disorder. Uh, for their children. Um, so there's, you figure out how many, if you are applicable or have a child that's applicable or someone that just can't sign, it could be someone that's 70 or 80 older than you, but they can't 
legally make an informed consent signature, fine. So once you find that doctor, it's best and most ethical to have the diagnosis already from your, if you have chronic pain, maybe you have your ortho or your family medicine doctor. You really don't want that cannabis doctor diagnosing the condition because that's, it's not really a bona fide relationship. But that happens, that happens. You see what I'm saying? And that's when it doesn't get, really get ethical. But usually someone comes in with sickle cell, they've been diagnosed already. Chronic pain, autism, it should already be diagnosed. So if you don't have a diagnosis, go get diagnosed by, by your family medicine doctor, uh, internal medicine doctor, just get diagnosed. And once you're diagnosed, take that, take your um, your history, you know, have your chart with you and say, hey, I'm a, you know, I'm a patient that's applicable. And so that doctor is gonna then set up a consult. Uh, that consult should be between 15 to 45 minutes. Um, the prices should be between $150 and $300 because uh, it's not much time. And that doctor will make will do an informed, look, look at your informed consent, look at the medications you're on, make sure there's no drug to drug interactions. Uh, you might jot down that your candidate's naive and hopefully uh, say, yeah, you, there's here, here's a cannabis recommendation, but also, you know, there's a dispensary where you can pick up these products I recommended. Uh, uh, in Georgia, the Department of Public Health, every county has their own Department of Public Health. The patient uh, usually gets a call within a week, within a week of seeing the doctor, they go pick up their cannabis ID card from the Department of Public Health, which is another small fee, I like use 25 bucks for their processing fee. And that card is usually good in most states for two years. The patient doesn't have to uh, reapply for two years. And usually that card is also a reciprocity card. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can use it in other medicinal cannabis states, uh, but you can only participate in that state. Whatever, cause you know, if you're from, if you're a patient in New Jersey and you guys have dry and gummies, but in Georgia, we only have oil. So you can only get oil from our dispensaries. So that, that's what reciprocity means. Okay. So that's the process. Uh, uh, everything is uh, in vital records. So it's pretty discreet. Um, you still can have a, uh, you still can have your gun here. You know, if you have a um, concealed weapon permit, uh, a lot of, you know, that was a big question here in Georgia. Do you, do you have to give up your concealed weapon permit? You don't. So we're good. A lot, another another question about the cannabis recommendations, like what if I'm uh, on probation? What if I'm a felon? That's medical discrimination. So if you're on probation and they're testing for cannabis and, and maybe five other listed drugs, once you get your cannabis card, they just take that uh, cannabis out your, uh, off that panel. Uh, so they don't test, you know, so obviously if you, if you test positive for cannabis, you're taking your meds as prescribed, which is what we want compliance. So a lot of my, a lot of my guys are, you know, they're drinking vinegar and going to the head shops and trying to flush their systems out. Like, dude, just go get a card, bro. I don't know what the hell you drinking. You know what I'm saying? Just go get a card. And it's, and, you tell your probation officer, look, yeah, you're gonna find cannabis now, but hey, how can you trump a doctor? You can't. Nah, that's real. You can't. So yeah, so that's the process. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it is very similar here in Jersey, just obviously the price is a little different, things like that, but the limits yeah. are a little different, but you know, same process. No standard price, it's up to the doc and up to his ethics, you know? Um, we all know what we can generate per hour, but you know, it's just, you gotta be ethical, you know? This is a chance where we can do it right. No, for sure, I mean, yeah. one, of the, one of the things me and my brother are actually working on is partnering with some of our MSO, uh, you know, uh, strategic partners and doing, streamlining the process so that our people can get in here, get it done, and, uh, you know, smoke and medicate properly. Yeah, you know? Yeah, you guys are doing great work, bro. No, Love you for that. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting too, when you mention work, because, I'm seeing more and more highly educated medical professionals that are choosing cannabis as their career path. Yeah. And I'm curious, like, what do, what do you think about that? I love it, bro. I love it, man. Um, uh, the innovation and research is just about to start. So, uh, you know, most of us um, never touched it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we never touched it. And that's, 
you know, there's only a few that I know have when I was growing up, when I was in med school, when I was in uh, high school, when I was, uh, they just don't ask you, you know? Like if you don't burn, people, they know you don't burn. Uh -huh. You dig? It's like people that, that that do coke, they're not gonna ask you to go to the bathroom for two seconds. It, it, you're just never gonna get asked, you know? We're, on, we're so, most of it has been in this lane in the, in the library and focus locked down. And then, uh, but we see there's so many gaps in this healthcare system. Uh, you see so many healthcare disparities still. Mm -hmm. I'm talking, why are black men still dying 12 years younger than white men? You know, why is the black babies dying four times more than the white babies? And it's 2021. Mm -hmm. you know, why are we getting all these chronic, I mean, you're like, man, what's up with the system, bro? Like, it, it, should, it should be even or it should be non-existing these, all these illnesses and diseases, you dig? For sure. And you get an opportunity and you understand there's so much bias, you know? If it generates money and it's conditioned that, hey, we can't cure, but we can treat for the rest of your life, that means we're gonna make dollars until the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. We'll pump that in commercials. We'll make sure we don't, you know, we. It does, you don't got to put two and two to, together to figure it out, right? Mm -hmm. So now you get opportunity in a field where there is no path forward. You get in it now, and I'm not just talking on the research and not just Dr. Chemist, the branding, you know, the path forward is now. So we're on the all on the ground floor and you get to really have a voice in this mm -hmm. healthcare system. And then, and, then, and, then, and then in this new future of comprehensive medicine, uh, you can you can make it more ethical. And and most of us became physicians, you know, to, to make a difference in people's in people's life, you know, to improve humanity, to uh, end suffering, um, to do no harm, you know, to practice off empirical evidence, you know, and 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 uh, they the marketing starts and you don't even know it. You learn in pharmacology and they say, what's the gold standard for, for bronchitis or upper respiratory tract infection? And, and they're gonna teach you a Z-Pack. Mm -hmm. And you'd be like, okay, that's the gold. So, but that's, someone owns the Z-Pack. What's the bias in that? If I'm doing a study, I'm saying Z-Pack, Z-Pack. And, and you don't understand you're being brainwashed. Mm -hmm. You don't get it. You don't, you don't understand that you're part of this business and all you are is a salesman. Yeah. So with social media and people are not like, whoa, that thing is saying, people are like, I hate that word. That word is, you're just way more of aware of how this whole thing works. Cannabis, bro, use your education, you know, use your credentials as an MD to really make a difference, bro. That's why we all became doctors, you know? No, and it's interesting, man, we always talk about it just encourage folks like you could do exactly what you're doing at the highest level in cannabis because it has a place yeah. for you everywhere you know what i'm talking about yeah so a, a lot of docs um i'm getting my masters y'all know that i didn't know that I, yeah. congratulations I, brother i'm at the university of maryland school of pharmacy that's the first master's program in the world in cannabis so i'm getting my master's in cannabis science and therapeutics and it's amazing, bro. Shit that I thought I knew, didn't know. My classmates and I, we're gonna create the industry. You dig? Um, so it's important, you know, there's like 15 colleges that have cannabis uh, educations and courses, you know? Mm -hmm. Harvard College just in uh, Illinois is like the 13th that has a cannabis curriculum. Mm -hmm. So this industry is, is about to get really robust and people with education will fill the fill those positions, you know? Unfortunately, you need that, you're gonna have to have this piece of paper to even talk about it soon. Or where is your credibility, you dig? So. And we need to talk, we need to talk offline too, doc, because we got this thing, the Minority Cannabis Academy. And it's designed just for that purpose to help our people get that accreditation, that certification, so they can come in with the knowledge and skills to get the job done, man. So for they, sure, they need that. amazing. They need that. That's amazing, man. But Doc, listen, before we let you get out of here, man, we, we always end this uh in this show on a high note. All right. Well, I had a ball, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, you, you, you ain't getting out of here yet. You ain't getting All out right. of here yet. I gotta ask, man. I got as I like this bun, I gotta ask. Yeah. 
What's your favorite strain of all time and why? Um, uh, White Widow. Okay. Uh, um, uh, I, that's when I, cause it was just a strain. It was like, I guess in the, in the 2010s and there was a lot of Blue Dream, a lot of that going around. You remember Blue Dream? For sure. Um, I had just got hurt and I'm trying different shit. And then here comes this White Widow. And that was my first time really getting relief, you know, from my pain and sleep. That that was a beautiful strand. Uh, White Widow, I went to the, then I followed the genetics to White Rhino. Mm-hmm. Uh, For sure. Yeah, but now but now it's all concentrates. And, uh, and I teach my folks, you know, cause the future is no more names, you know? So to really get caught up in the chemotype and get caught up in the ratio, uh, the names that will go away pretty quick. Uh-huh. There'll be a few that will stick around, but it's so hard to protect the genetics and have a uh, homogeneity, you know? For you sure. Know, you know, that whatever, if, you, if you're on some wedding breath, it's gotta be the same as the same wedding breath here in, jo- in Georgia, and it won't. Nah. It won't, the test totally different. So the way we're gonna do it in the future, and the way they're doing it now is, is, is the CBD THC ratio will be on that formulation, wherever it's inhaled, whatever it's a topical, whether it's a suppository, um, that ratio, the ratio is gonna be very important. And the chemotype will tell you how much, what terpenes are in it, what flavonoids are in it. You see me? Listen, dog, every now and then we gotta do an imaginary mic drop. You know what I mean? Drop that shit, bro. That's, just, <laughs> that's it. That's it. If we're going to do it, we got to do the shit right. And that's how it's going to go down. I bet. Jersey, bro. You know what I'm talking about? Jersey, strong, bro. Manalapin, Mama's County, man. You better ask somebody. Straight up, straight up. Well, listen, man, there y'all have it, man. We want to just thank the entire 420 NJ events family for tuning in, holding us down. Make sure you got the notifications on. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We obviously got to thank our sponsor, Hemper. Make sure you check them out at hemper.co. That's hemper.co. Yes, the Higher Learner with 420 NJ Events Podcast featuring Dr. Hodge. Until next time, Medicaid responsibly. Let's go!